Welcome to the Newsmakers Podcast. I'm Billy Hollowell, and this is a show where we go behind the headlines every day to bring you an interview with a pastor, entertainer, politician, or other notable news figure. And this is a show, again, it's daily, but it's based on our weekly TV show, which is also called Newsmakers. You can watch it on the CBN News Channel and also on our YouTube page. And on this show, every day, we dive deep. It's a little more longer form with one of the people who you will often see on our Newsmakers show or across the CBN News platforms. On today's Newsmakers, we're talking all about Nigeria. We have Sean Nelson, legal counsel with ADF International, warning about the dangerous anti-Christian biases that are raging inside the African country. Of late, the newest situation involves two colleges that are reportedly banning Christians from worship. With no further ado, here is Sean Nelson to break it all down. Now, Sean, you are legal counsel for ADF International, and one of the issues that you're dealing with right now, and there are so many issues around the globe, this particular one is happening in Nigeria, where there are two different colleges and their government schools that have reportedly banned Christian religious activities on campus. Tell us what's going on here. Well, thank you you for having me on, Billy, and I I really appreciate it. Um, Yeah, the situation in Nigeria, just, just generally is a very, very difficult situation for Christians in particular, uh, especially in the northern part of the country. Uh, Nigeria itself, it's the largest democracy in Africa. There's about 200, over 200 million people who live there. Um, It's it's roughly equally divided between Christians and Muslims, uh, with the northern portion of the country being predominantly Muslim, with a significant population of Christians. And so a lot of times those Christians are pretty marginalized and have and face a lot of discrimination. And that's what we're seeing in these two universities. So you're absolutely right. One, these are public universities. Uh, one is a state university, one's a federal university in a state called Katsina. It's in the far northwest of Nigeria. Um, and uh, there are Christian students there. It's actually a pretty high number of Christian students some Christian faculty. Uh, and they since I think 2017 for one of the uh, universities and 2022 for the other one, um, there has been a uh, ban on the Christian students being able to use any facilities for worship, for fellowship, anything like that. Uh, And the reason you know it's discrimination is that there are, the Muslim students are completely allowed to use uh, all of these facilities. In fact, there there are mosques on campus, Um, there are specific buildings uh, uh, for them. And in, in Nigeria, just like in, in a lot of places in the U.S. or around the world, to accommodate different religious groups, the universities will build chapels or they'll build mosques or anything like that on, on campus. And that's the normal case in most of Nigeria. Uh, but in these two particular universities, they're not doing that. They're preventing Christians uh, from using those spaces, um, from worshiping on campus, uh, having fellowship. They have to go off campus to do that. It's just plain discrimination. So they've locked doors, they've pushed them out of the buildings where they would meet, and they're allowing the other religious groups, the Muslims, the others, to meet on campus and to do what they what they would normally do. Right. But the Christians are the only ones essentially unable to do that. Is that accurate? Uh, That's right. It's I I think the only groups that are allowed um, to to use the facilities on campus are just Muslim groups. Um, There's there's not too many other other religious groups uh, in, in that area. It's mostly going to be either Muslim or Christian or some African traditionalist religions, um, but that's a very small group. And so, yeah, so this really is something where it's very explicitly favoring uh, one religion, and in this case, Islam, um, against uh, the other religion, which in this case is Christianity. And that's just totally in violation of the Constitution. It's in violation of these individuals' fundamental rights. The Nigerian Constitution, it protects very explicitly uh, the freedom of religion or belief. People are able to worship practice, do all of those kinds of things. And again, this is something that you see in in other universities throughout Nigeria, that Christians and Muslims both have uh, worship spaces, both have fellowship spaces, and it's not an issue. But in, in this area, um, it's become an issue. Uh, it's, it's a very unfortunate thing. And when you just think about what Christians are facing generally in northern Nigeria, the discrimination uh, it, it is, is really astounding to see it coming from these public entities from from these government-run uh, facilities, one federal, one state. Um, that, that's a really, really outrageous thing. Uh, and when you combine that with some of the targeted killings that Christians are facing all across the North, 
Um, there's been hundreds of kidnappings recently, just the last couple of weeks. It's a, it's a, it's a really horrible situation for them. And this just contributes to that marginalization. Well, you know, you go back to 2022 when there was a stoning of a Christian college student at the beginning of that year. And that was really the first time I think a lot of people internationally, of course, people like you and ADF International and others are very aware of what's going on there. But I think that incident was one that woke a lot of people up and they said, wait a minute, a student, a Christian student was stoned to death. What is going on here? And as you stated, we've seen again and again and again, um, young people, you know, families, people being abducted. This is horrific. And you mentioned a couple of things I think are important before we come back to this particular instance to talk about. This is a country that is very much, it's not like it's 90% Muslim, 10% Christian. There's a split where almost half of the country is Christian. Why has it been that this has been sort of allowed to fester in this way and grow in this way? It's 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 a really uh, interesting question, and it's a difficult question, and and a lot of it, I think, has been um, primarily because the government is not prosecuting people who commit these heinous crimes. So you you're talking about Deborah Yakubu. She was a, a young twenties. Um, uh, college student up in Sokoto State, which is very close by Katsina State, um, where these university cases are happening. And um, and all she did, there was a, a class WhatsApp group, and um, and all she did was was respond to some of those men- messages. She mentioned Jesus. She thanked Jesus for uh, one of her exams. Um, uh, sometimes she she did complain about some folks who used it more for kind of religious um, proselytization or something like that. Um, but that, that's really all she did. And because that offended uh, her Muslim classmates uh, in that situation, um, they it was about 50 of them, maybe more. They whipped up this huge mob, uh, as you say, about two years ago, and they took over the school. Um, they overwhelmed the security there. Uh, the, the police forces did not arrive to be able to, to help do anything. Uh, and they stoned her to death. Um, they, they beat her and then they, they lit her body on fire. Um, and and that became an international story uh, because people got video of it, and it's horrific video of these attackers. You know, a lot saying Allahu Akbar, that that sort of thing, while while she is on fire in the back. Um, and it, it's just a, it's a very disturbing video, and it's this disturbing thing um, that's happening. These blasphemy accusations, um, th- these accusations that uh, uh, people should not be able to live together. That if you say anything that is contrary to my beliefs as as a, a Muslim, that somehow gives me the right to attack you uh, or to push you out of the community. Um, it's, it's a really worrisome trend. And we've seen these kinds of blasphemy laws being used um, against Christians, against minority Muslims, actually, not just um, you know, Sufi Muslims. Uh, there's there's a case, many cases of them being sentenced to death because they stated beliefs that are different from the predominant view of Islam. Um, and so you have this, this disturbing trend and nobody is ever punished. Uh, in Deborah's case, they arrested two attackers, just two attackers, uh, and they released them a year later for failure to prosecute. And so they are free. No one has been held accountable for that. Um, no one is, is ever held accountable for any of these kinds of attacks. Uh, over Christmas, you had uh, I think at least 200 Christians who were slaughtered in a village in Plateau um, by militants who were driven at least in part by religious belief. And nobody's been found, nobody's in prison, nobody's arrested, nothing happened. So I think that impunity is a major, major part that emboldens uh, the extremists to be able to to take these kinds of positions and do these kinds of actions. Well, and, and to your point, when you have you know two colleges coming up with these policies, people are watching. And if these colleges are allowed to continue doing this, other schools will follow suit. You'll see it grow. This is what happens, right? If nobody's held accountable, what happens? The people behaving badly, they behave even worse. And so what is ADF International doing right now to intervene in this particular instance when it comes to Christians being banned from religious activity on these campuses? So one of the things that, that we do is we, we support local lawyers uh, who are taking these kinds of religious freedom cases uh, on the ground in Nigeria and and all around the world. And it's something that um, I'm very proud of. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to support these people who are, are so courageous, the lawyers who are courageous, um, their clients. It takes a lot of courage uh, to be a Christian student in an area where, where you already feel pretty, pretty marginalized, um, to stand up to 
uh, uh, these big universities to stand up um, to people who have already said we don't we don't necessarily want you to express your faith. And so to do that, um, I think takes a lot of courage. And so we we support those uh, we support those lawyers, um, and we do a lot of advocacy things like like this interview just to let people know what's happening. Um, you know, ninety percent of the Christians who are killed around the world, it's thousands and thousands, 90% of those Christians who are killed are in Nigeria. That's how extreme this persecution can be. And when you have um, uh, schools where people just want to be educated, they just want to learn to improve themselves and to improve their country. Nigeria is a poor country. And so these kinds of, you know, going to university, it's a very important thing um, for them to be able to uh, support their society, supportive thing. And so when you have that kind of discrimination that says, no, you as a Christian, you are not welcome here. Um, that's that's a really terrible thing. And to have it be supported basically by by public universities, by government support um, to say that's okay, it's not okay. And as you say, we are very concerned that it's going to spread. That's why we want to let people know. We know that this has been happening for years. It's been happening at these um, at these universities for years. When we heard about it, we said, wow, that's something that that needs to be stopped. Um, I've heard from other people since this story broke that, hey, this this kind of thing is happening at my university too. And so we're looking into those different cases. Um, but we, we've seen a lot of just incredible responses uh, in Nigeria and around the world, from people saying, this is wrong. Um, this is not what we should be promoting. We shouldn't be discriminating against ev- anybody. Uh, everybody should have the right to uh, freedom of worship, to freedom to, to come together and have fellowship uh, with your co-religionists, and that nobody should be harmed for that, nobody should be killed for that, nobody should be discriminated uh, against because of that. And that's our position in Nigeria. That's our position all around the world. Well, and you know, just before we go here, how are the college students doing? Have we heard anything from them? Those Christian college students who have really, you know, for years now been unable to to worship and do what everybody else is able to do on their campus. How are they holding up? Well, it's 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 one of these things, and it's 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 amazing when you work um, with persecuted Christians, and you know, in in the West, we're very comfortable. We sit in nice nice places, and and um, and the people who are persecuted, they have they have very difficult lives, um, and they face they face threats and discrimination every day. And yet, in terms of the 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 spirit moving through them, in terms of their relationship with God, it's such an inspiration. Um, because they're they're always the most joyful people, um, and and they really take um, they they see that that persecution, you know, and they and they turn it around for the glory of God. So it's 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 just an incredible witness um, from 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 these folks, um, the Christian students. They're they're glad that people are praying for them. Um, they're they're asking people to pray for them. They're asking people to speak out about this case, um, to speak out on behalf of freedom of worship on, on freedom to live out your faith in public, to not be harassed. Um, so I think that they are in good spirits. Obviously they're concerned, um, but these are very courageous, very faithful people. Um, if you want to learn more, you can go to adfinternational.org. Um, we, we have lots of, of cases on, on Nigeria, um, and, and all across the world where you can see the same story of, of people who are persecuted, um, for their faith and just, just how strong their faith uh, is and and I think that's just a wonderful inspiration. Well, Sean, I agree, and I appreciate you coming on today to break it all down for us. Again, they can go over to ADF International for more information. Appreciate your time today. That's all for today's Newsmakers podcast. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of the show, and also head over to the CBN News YouTube channel and the CBN News channel to watch Newsmakers every week. We'll see you soon.